Mark McGowan from the Department of History at the University of Toronto, and here I'm in a very rainy Mullingar in uh, Westmeath County uh, in Ireland. And behind me is one of the uh, only existing famine structures in Mullingar. It's a workhouse. Uh, there were workhouse unions all across Ireland in the 1840s. They had been established here by the British government in order to relieve uh, certain degrees of deserving poverty. Uh, unfortunately, the model used in Ireland was completely inappropriate and the government was told so uh, because this was a largely rural country as opposed to uh, what was already had been done uh, in Great Britain. Nevertheless, these would be places where destitute uh, Irish famine victims would go uh, begging for food and accommodation and of course working for it because if they were to work, then they could eat. Um, the door in front of you would be where they would be greeted by the head of the workhouse. Men and women would be separated, as was boys and girls. They would live in different wings. Uh, they would eat daily, but of really questionable quality of food. Uh, and uh, many were turned away from the workhouses when they were full. They were run by boards of guardians who had very little uh, in terms of flexibility in allowing more uh, than what was warranted. Uh, but in the end, during the famine period, most workhouses in Ireland, much like this one, were overtaxed uh, and people eventually began sleeping in the yards and taking their food outside. Uh, this was what was referred to as outdoor relief. But this was really some place that Irish people dreaded to go. Uh, and uh, the workhouse became synonymous with misery during the famine.